Hello everyone and welcome back to Xenoblade Chronicles. In the last episode, well, we beat the game. Uh, we found out uh, answers to everything um, about, you know, what's going on with the world, what's happening with Shulk, and and we defeated Zanza and Crater World with no need for gods. And now we're back to, you know, before we went to Fort Dixon, because that's where this game locks you in. Because we've got approximately 15, 16, maybe 17 more episodes worth of stuff to do. Uh, that's side stuff, and that's kind of polishing off everything, like every quest, every heart to heart, uh, all of the extra kind of like stuff going through New Game Plus, all of that. Believe me, I intend to really finish this game. Um, and then we'll be onto the DLC, which was fully blind to me, so that'll be a lot of fun. Um, things to do. Expo mode is off now. Because then we have no, um, no need to worry about, um, we don't need to worry about uh, being overleveled, um, because there's no story stuff we can really be overleveled for. I'm just going to crack my maximum experience into everyone and then turn expo mode off. So we will just level up by in, in the conventional sense now. Um, so that's going to be mildly interesting. Secondly, let's play around with costumes a bit now. Uh, I've been generally trying to restrict people to relatively serious costume. Not relatively, okay. Not entirely serious. But stuff that wouldn't look out of place on their character in a cutscene. Uh, I don't have that constraint now because I won't really have any more cutscenes. So I'm going to just play around a bit and see what we've got access to. So we've got Ryan fully decked out in Aerith gear, which I don't think we've seen before. I don't think we've seen any of these before. Donban in M100, which is quite the look. He basically very much ends up looking like the Bionis, though with some sweet high heels. And he's got a weird spear that he attacks with. Shala, we have gone for wild kind of pirate look, which I quite enjoy. Fiora, we've kind of gone for this blue and silvery kind of look overall. Ricky is decked out like a little bluey, greeny, tealy Nopon, which I... not Nopon, Mechon, which I love. Uh, Melee, we've actually got the same uh, gear, but it's the Titan Type 3, which I think looks quite cool, we've not seen before. And then finally, Shulk is on the Orion type, which is this very kind of demon-y looking stuff, which I particularly enjoy. Some of these just look daft in cutscenes, but that doesn't matter anymore. Right, first things first, let's head off to Aerith Sea. Um, pretty much every episode between now and the end will contain a heart to heart. heart some will contain two, and then everything else will be an entire episode of Heart to Heart in the end. I am going to do all of them. Uh, but it becomes a lot easier to get affinity up between the parties at a certain point, which is right near the end, so you'll see that when we get to it. Anyway, uh, the one we want is over here, so let's just make the time be right. There's only one way to enjoy this view of Aerith Sea. Dunban, you look happy. I know, you're getting married. And to whom exactly? Alright, that was just a wild guess. What's up? Fiora gave me the most remarkable present. Ooh, is that what's in your hand? It is indeed. It's a rare insect found only in Col Colony 9. Take a look if you like. Ugh, I hate creepy crawlies. I'd love to. Thank you. Well, it, it does look unusual. We don't get those at Colony 6. She remembered the exact type I like. Ah, no wonder you're beaming. Wouldn't you be if someone gave you something that you liked? Yeah, getting presents always feels like it nice if it's, if it's something I like. Yeah, it can be annoying to get something you have no use for. Like fruit. I don't like fruit. If someone gave me fruit, I wouldn't know what to do with it. But the thought is still nice. That's very true, but some people are particularly clueless. The other day, Shulk gave Ricky an old machine part, for instance. <laughs> he did? What was he thinking? Everyone knows if it's not food, Ricky's not going to be interested. I was there. Poor Ricky. He was so confused. I just stood and laughed. <laughs> Shulk's a bit slow on the uptake. Maybe he'll get the hang of these things someday. He certainly needs refining. He hasn't been giving Fiora anything ridiculous, has he? I hope not. If he did, Fiora would give him an earful. You really worry about those two, don't you? Heh, <laughs> that I do, Shala. Because Shulk's the one to marry Fiora. I know it. Hello, Bionis Adonban. Oh, sorry, Shala. I was thinking about, um, a present to give Fiora a return. Any ideas? So that one, you'll see more when you see the alternative pathways at the end. That one, like a number of hearts to hearts, is really useful for actually gleaning information, if you don't already know it, I don't want to do trial and error, on who likes what when it comes to a gift. Um, because... Those, like, Dunban saying he doesn't like fruits, uh, but he likes bugs, Mel uh, Sharla hates bugs. You can use those to determine what categories of gifts they are likely to like and not like, which is pretty cool. Ah, oh, 
Never get bored of the view up from Aerith Sea. Anyway, uh, on to business with the actual episode. Um, we're first off going to tackle Mo Replica Monado. Not number four. We still can't do that. Um, demonic Everflame from a dragon somewhere on Bionis. There's only three dragons at all on Bionis, um, but uh, Dragon King Alcar cannot drop the Demonic Everflame, and the other two ones, we one we haven't got access to, and one will knock <laughs> seven shades of shit out of us. Uh, so we won't be doing that yet. Mammoth horns are also a bit challenging. But... We will be doing Replica Monado 5. We've already got a Toculus King Egg, that's good. Uh, put it where you get the other things, Future Doctor. Um, so, we're actually just going to trade for the other ones entirely. Slow Boss are high level, like 99 or more. Uh, and as are the high level Brogs, they're annoying things in the new part of Ter Tefra Cave. Uh, which we've still got quite a lot of business in over the coming episodes. Um, so, I'm actually going to trade for those ones instead. Um, for the... It's actually pointing us to Valak Mountain for the... Um, Slow boss rock, because there are slow boss here. Um, there's some at uh, Three Sage Summit and whatnot. But actually, we want to come here to Harrick Chapel, because there's someone who will trade with us, fortunately. Uh, there's a couple of high end here that we know in here. For example, there's Karalth and Zane, who have a, has a quest for us. We won't be doing that for a while yet. But Yura here, if we trade with him. Then indeed, he will offer the yellow slow boss rock. Then, finally, we need the Brog Eye, uh, which comes from Colony 9. Again, there's a trade here. Um, so if we go to Colony 9, into the residential district. And this fella wandering around with the quite remarkable trousers is Peppino. Do you want to make a trade? Indeed, we can trade him for... No, we can't. Oh, it's an overtrade, that's why. Uh, what is this cheapest thing? Broken Bar M, and we need to beat this by 8,000-ish. So let's offer him... What do we have quite a lot of? Um, Black Iris, why not? And then he says the usual, you don't mind if I take this, I feel bad, so take this. And he gives us the Diamond Brog Eye. Brilliant, with that we've got all the Monado parts, so let's go and clock them in to Venea. So for that she creates the Monado Saga, which has been designed for superior defense. Its thick materials suppress the blade output. Attack strength is greatly reduced, but it provides peerless defense. So these final two ones, the ones you get from Monado, uh, Monado, Replica Monado 4 and 5, are a bit different. Um, they only have two slots and are a bit more unusual in their usage. Uh, we'll compare, I think the Agni is the best one to actually directly compare the Saga to. Um, that if we compare them one to one, uh, we will see. So the Saga has slots where the, has an extra, is missing an extra slot, so we've only got two slots. Its minimum damage is greater than... Is the, basically, the Agni is increased block rate, and the Saga is much more defensive. So, uh, the Saga has a higher minimum attack rate, but a lower maximum attack rate than the Agni. And it gives you a gigantic bonus to physical and ether defense. Like, 150 to each one is pretty strong. Um, but it doesn't give as high a block rate as the Agni, so it's kind of... It depends what you want, whether you want kind of blocking, or whether you want defense and with a kind of a more reliable attack power... It's just, they're both very kind of situational. I don't actually tend to use either. I, I like the Abyss for now, um, just because of its power. But we do start hitting an issue here. Uh, is the Monado, uh, the Replica Monados level up with Shulk? Um, as his actual Monado did, because they're the only weapons he's got access to. They grow as he does. As you hit higher levels, they all hit a level cap. Already the Monado Abyss is at it. Its maximum attack is 999, and it can't go any higher with, than that. That seems alright for now, and it is better than the others, but when some of these other ones, like the Agni and the Rudra, approach 999, the advantage of the Abyss starts being lost. Even now, they're only 65 behind it. It's like, you know what? Um, yeah, once the original Replica Monado is up to 999, then its critical rate is the only thing that's worse than the Abyss on, so you got to keep an eye on this max attack to make sure that you're not at the cap and not getting advantage of some of the more powerful ones. Anyway, uh, with that done, we need to head back to Colony Stick. Uh, Colony 9, because we've got a couple of quests to wrap up here. There's some of the final few Colony 9 quests in the game we'll be dealing with this episode. There's only one that we won't be dealing with, um, because it involves fighting some real high-level nonsense. Yeah, that's kind of the only thing that's defining which quests I am and am and am not doing at the moment is... Um, level. So I am just waiting to level up naturally. I'm not going to go into easy mode or anything like that. So quests that require me fighting, you know, high-level ship, um, I'm going to wait until... I'm high enough level to do them, or I'll jeb them in certain ways where possible. Um, but anyway, here, in order to do this quest, you have to have completed a couple of quests. Uh, you have to have completed the entire Young Captain Emilita arc, 
Um, because otherwise, Kant's here who offers the quest is being a dick and poisoning people. Um, and weirdly, you also have to have com completed Education Crazy Susanna. That is because Susanna is his wife, and this quest is about her and their child. What am I supposed to do? His birthday's just around the corner, but I've got work! What is it? You're looking down in the dumps. Oh, hello there. I was thinking about making some shoes for my son's birthday. Uh, it's just that I haven't got time to get the materials I need. It'd be a great help if someone could collect them for me. Shoes, is it this year? You're always so good to this boy. There isn't a father in the world who doesn't dote on his son. Surely you, who cares dearly for your younger sister, understand. So this is birthday shoes. Correct two as your flummy wings from opulent flummy in the colony. I am most grateful. I cannot leave my post in front of my subordinates. I should need only two as your flummy wings to make the shoes. I know it's a lot to ask, but it would mean a lot to my son. No sweat. We'll be done before you know it. So, annoyingly, uh, we've got one of them, but not the other. So, speed on as we're going to swim towards Agora Shore. We're not going to go directly to where we get the fleas, because first off, we have a second heart-to-heart -to, -heart to do while we're here. So, this here is between Ryan and Sharla, overlooking the colony. What's up, Sharla? Look, I look at the colony and all I can think of is how things used to be. Back when you lived in Colony 6, you mean? Before all this happened? Yeah, I think about what Colony 6 was like back then. And then I remember the status it now and it breaks my heart. Do you want to go back there? If you went back, you could help out with the reconstruction. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't thought about it, but I can't, not right now. Why not? All the survivors in the camp would love to see you again. I feel like it's... Just not time yet. We still have battles to fight. How can I think about going home and living a peaceful life? Don't be so hard on yourself. Even everyone deserves a break sometimes, you especially. Otherwise you'll keel over from all the stress. You're right, of course. I can't do everything on my own. Nah, you're getting it. What would you do without me? You make me smile, Ryan. I have to know, would you be angry right now if I hadn't agreed with you? Of course I'll be angry. We're friends, aren't we? Oh, I see. You'd be angry as a friend. Uh, I mean, well, uh, not, not just because we're friends. Why are you laughing? Oh, no reason. I'll never stay sad when I'm around you. I'm so glad I met you, Ryan. That went way over my head, but whatever. I'm happy too. Uh, I do like the interactions between Ryan and Charlotte. They're always quite good. And there's some good ones in the alternative routes for that, uh, which will also be at the end of the episode. There'll be a big end of the episode, I think, to this one. Because um, there'll be two sets of... of Hard to hearts, which is very exciting. Anyway, let's head actually over to where we get these Flamini now on the unnamed distant shore. This is a Gora shore, that, no idea. That literally doesn't have a name in game. And these opulent Flamis are the ones which are of interest to us, so let's beat them up. It's a fairly common drop, so we should get it fairly easily. And there we go, that's your Flamini flam wing on the first drop. Uh, let's go back and give it to Counts. Normally, the straight line district distance the military districts is really short, but yeah, you gotta go around and do all that bullshit. Well, I mean, I didn't have to do the hard heart, that would have been a bit faster, but I yeah, I believe I do have to do the hard heart, I certainly view it that way. Oh, it looks like you've brought what I need. I can make a great pair of shoes with these. Ha! I can see the look on Moritz's face now. Well, that's that. Oh, I almost forgot your reward. It's not much, but please take it. And that completes birthday shoes. Weirdly, yeah, that one's at the end of a long chain and also... Oh, level up run. Also very high affinity you need for that one. You need four and a half stars, so... Um, we've got to be getting... I think, I guess... Uh, oh, God, look at the right menu, Doctor. There we go. Um, he says loading the wrong menu. Affinity chart, there we go. Um, yeah, everywhere other than Colony 3, we're up to um, full now. Uh, look at this. It's a Trinity chart. Every one of these is a quest completed. Um, these links between them, which is all very nice. My visualizer looks even nicer. Right, uh, one more quest to do this episode. Let's head over. We're going to head down here uh, to exactly this quest here. And this quest, indeed, is with Cancer's son, Moritz. Whoa, you're huge! I got something I need to ask you. You're lively as usual. What's up this time? Very Ryan heavy episode today. I knew you'd be the one to ask. You're always the helpful one, you are. Like a big friend of Yamu. Hey, come on, kid. Enough of the banter, all right? Ah, fine, if you say so. I want you to get me the friendship tokens. Friendship tokens? What are they? What? You never heard of them? Everyone in Colony 6 knows them. Arachno sickles, lizard moon jewels, and... Oh, bunny of clubs, now I remember. I collected them when I was little. I knew it. So you do know about them. 
Of course, you collect them and you share them with your friends. It means you'll say it means you'll be friends forever. It's what gives you the sense of, uh, what's the word? Camaraderie. I collect them with shock. Yeah, they're the ones. Can you get them for me? I want us three to be best friends. <sighs> yeah, when everyone's kids, they get friendship tokens that you can only get from fighting level 95 monsters in Tefra Cave. It's some bullshit. I knew you the guy for the job. Arachnosickles, Lizard Moon Jewels, and Bunniv Clubs. Shouldn't be a problem for a big guy like you. So, we are fighting high level monsters. Higher level than we can actually take on in terms of it will get, will be into agility um, debt. So, we're going to switch up to the Ether party, which is Charlotte. Melia, and I'm going to mix things up a bit with Fiora. So, first off, I actually need to, I think, uh, let's see how Fiora's equipment is looking. Yeah, I'm going to need to briefly buy some equipment from Fiora, so let's head to one of the shops in Colony 6. So from here, I want to buy the Edon drones, because uh, these have gun drones too. Uh, gun drones is the one that attacks in a circle around Fiora, and crucially, unlike sword drones, it is ether type. Uh, and unlike cannon drones, it's much better. Um, so, we'll equip those. And then we'll equip her with a lot of ether gear. So, these all give... Uh, some of them are actually better than what you got. Oh, we've already got ether goggles. Do they have deeper through it? I suppose she's already on max ether up. What's the ether frame look like? Attack plus. Not useful. I actually want the haste frame on. Um, haste is much more useful to us here. So, then her initial tension is good. Double attack, art heal is all good. Brilliant. Um, so... Now we need to swap around Fiora's arts a little bit as well. Um, because we want to make sure she's got access to a lot of her ether arts ready. Speed shift will actually still be handy. Um, cross impact, yeah, that's good. Um, final cross is nice and leveled up. But we'll put ether drain on and give that a fair bit of level up because that gives a big boost to Fiora's ether, so that can be really handy to fire up. Um, and then that lasts for, you know... 16 seconds during which you can fire off your drones uh, and everything's all well and good. We'll actually keep a couple of fighting moves in there just in case. Um, yeah, that's almost as... Gun drones is almost as... It's actually more powerful than sword drones. It just it does six attacks instead of ten. Uh, Melia, I actually think we want uh, summon ice onto Melia instead of power effect. It's actually more handy for her to just have a better range of elementals to constantly draw from rather than buffing, because uh, we actually need her for basically dealing damage, and especially the damage over time. That's what's going to make her powerful. And Sharla, do we want you to be a bit more... Um... Ooh, full level headshot is nice. But I didn't th finish what I was saying. Uh, we want Sharla to be a little bit more... Focus less on healing and more on kind of buffy... Well, actually, no, 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 we probably do want her on that. Um... Yeah, I'm going to put Headshaker on there as well, because then because Melia can break and topple with Starlight Kick, and then her and Fiora have both got chances to daze, and then that means you can potentially fire off uh, Headshot and just and just kill a man, uh, which is great. We'll actually leave her on the uh, Arts Palette she's on, level up Shield Bullet a little bit, because that'll be handy. She's got AP for daze on Sharla, so... Right, with that, let's actually... Ooh, Art to Art, so that's an achievement. Um, don't know what that is, but there we go. So, the main area we're going to hit for this is going to be the new area of Tefra Cave, um, which is where most of this takes place. So, let's start off at the Heavenly Window. I should add, as you'll likely have seen when we first did this, there are, in fact, trades for almost everything we need from here. Uh, the Bunniv Clubs that we're going to get first, though, um, there's no way to trade for these. Um, so, these you absolutely have to get uh, from these. This one at least is... So yellow enemies are generally fine. You might struggle a little bit to hit them, but generally you're going to be all right um, compared to red ones where you're really not going to have a chance of, of hitting them. Um, but if we try and get drones built up while we're on this guy... And that's a club. Wonderful. Let's continue. Let's do a weird purple chain attack. I'm not sure if we've ever particularly seen one of those before. But we'll hit with that. Then we'll hit with Mind Blast for two. Then if anyone survives that, Thunderbullet for three. Getting get another pelt off this one, let's see. No. Oh yeah, no, it's not pelts, it's a club, which we did indeed want. If we drop down here into the heavenly window, we'll actually find more enemies that we need. Because uh, there are some Dorsair lizards that we need, so let's try taking on these guys as well. These are a bit lower level, so they should be alright. Oh, that's one of our moon jewels, and we apparently already had one, so that's two lizard moon jewels, which is pretty sweet. 
There's some more bunnivs up here. I, these are the fascist ones. I want to avoid uh, drawing the attention of the judicious bunnit Zol, though, because he can be a real, real piece of shit. Well, I final crossed nothing there. That's hilarious. Um, there's a combo that's really nice that we can let off uh, with Fiora as well. Um, which I haven't had a chance to yet. Another Bunnit Club. That's nice. Um, but if we look at her arts, I will demonstrate what it is. Because in this next fight I'm planning, we might have a good crack at it. Uh, basically, you use... You basically fire off your drones. And firing off your drones um, will almost always put Fiora into high tension. Which makes... Final Cross available. Fire off Final Cross, topple everything in front of you. Then fire off Zero Gravity, which hits, fills the talent gauge for every toppled enemy you hit with it. So if you fire out that off, your drones will just be ready to roll again. Um, which is a real nice kind of three-stage combo, which is good when Fiora is surrounded. A lot of Fiora's stuff, her ether stuff, is area of effect, which is particularly spicy. Let's go somewhere a bit different now. Um, let's try and avoid these goggles if we can and get to the other side. They are vision types, so we should be alright to just- Nope! Protective Torquedon saw us! Right, shit. Um, the enemies I'm interested in are in through their other side. Um, but I don't want this lad to follow me in there. So I'm gonna hope he can't follow me through here, because he's a flying bastard. Indeed, he gets trapped at the entrance. Cool, guess I'm fighting some more bonnets before I do that, then. No, he does not get trapped. Oh, oh, no! There's like a parade of Gogols following me. Jesus Christ. Let's just run from these. So through here are actually some of the spiders we need, um, but there's a lot of other stuff in there which will be annoying, like the brog. Actually, uh, we might do alright. You know what, fuck it, let's do this. Uh, there's a potentially better space to fight the spiders, but that may not be necessary. So let's do some combo stuff, like I was saying. So I'm going to lure a few more of these arachnos into the fights, um, because this is easier when I'm more surrounded. So, gun drones, fire that off. A lot of damage is dealt around us. We then fire off immediately a final cross. That does a hell of a lot of damage. And topples things. We then fire off zero gravity. Refilling our talent gauge. Then we go straight into a chain attack where we're nice and powerful. You see that three stage attack. It is beautiful. We'll actually open with the final cross. Then with Melia we'll chain. With whatever elemental champs have around. Then with Sharla. Uh, ooh, we could head trick him. And then try and get a headshot. Let's see what happens. Yeah, let's stun him. And then let's see what Charlotte does. She might be able to just headshot him and he'll just be fucking dead. No, nope, she's healing people. And she's head shaking him. A headshot. Oh, she used headshot on him, but it didn't inflict the instant death, unfortunately. Right, let's keep on fighting here. I'm glad I got to see that combo firing off because it is so nice with Fiora. Uh, when she's surrounded in ether mode, um, <laughs> she's not the one who's surrounded, you are. It's brilliant. As in you being the enemy here. These guys have dropped some arachno sickles that we needed as well. Beautiful. Let's take on a few more of arachnos here. Guess we're not going to the other location for arachnos because we've got enough here. Uh, right, so let's fight these guys using exactly the same trick. So, number one, drones. Oh, I didn't get attention ready. What a shame. Oh, it's because we didn't get battle star affinity. That'll be why. Well, we tried. And that's our fourth arachno sickle. Brilliant. Um, so now let's go and take on some more bonnivs. All right, now there we go. Now we can do it. So, gun drones. Then we do final cross. Then we do zero gravity. And then we're half-charged again and ready to go. And while tension's high, always nice once you've used Final Cross to use Final Cross again in a chain attack. And obviously Final Cross is ether type, so it's very powerful with the setup we've got at the moment for Fiora. Uh, let's just kill this man. Now you go, shot him right in the brain hole. Then that's the final club, and now we just need to get the moon sickles. Uh, actually, the best way I'd say to do that is if we walk back to Villia Lake. And then we actually just walk manually this way. Right, I'm going to get all these chests. I don't know what they're here for. I must have been just killing some lizards a while ago. But we need to kill much larger lizards now. So uh, we'll move along into the bone corridor. And there's a good deposit of lizards there. Only one jewel from all those lizards. That's a bit obnoxious. Anyway, there's another batch of them here. So let's try again. And there we go. There's our final jewel. So let's return back to Moritz. 
Oh, he's coming straight back to me, apparently. He must be off somewhere. Well, let's intercept him. No, come back here. There we go. Thanks. Now the three of us are going to be friends forever. Glad you like him, kid. By the way, surely three lots of each item is enough. Why do you want four? You're strong, but you ain't bright. Respect your elders, kid. And you're forgetting one thing. Shock does more thinking for me. Ha, <laughs> I did forget. But surely you can figure out what the extra set's for. No idea. It's for you. You went through all the trouble of getting the things for us. You're our friend at all. Oh man, they're for me. I'm getting this warm, fuzzy feeling inside. You're a good kid, I'll admit. Ain't I just. You come and play with us any time. You're, you're always welcome. You got it, kid. And you can't break a promise. There's no way. That's no way to show off your camaraderie or whatever it was. And that completes friendship tokens, which, as you might have got from the hint, unlocks Ryan's camaraderie skill branch. So this is Ryan's fifth skill branch, and it's quite a useful one in a lot of ways. Um, it increases his physical defense, which is very nice. Increases the chance of a chain link. That's pretty cool. Heals the party after a chain attack. Also very cool. Uh, it's battle start affinity grants haste to the party, uh, which is pretty good. Battle start strength uh, grants strength up when a party member is incapacitated. Also really good. And boosts infinite affinity when gaining when uh, boosts the affinity gained when encouraging an ally. All genuinely really good. It's a kind of like slightly more supporty character, Ryan. And we are going to hold it there for the episode. Next episode, uh, we're going to be doing. Well, over the next two episodes, we're going to do quite a long series of quests throughout Colony 6. Um, and I hope you'll join me then. Thank you very much, and good day. Oh, hang around at the end for a lot of extra heart tart stuff. This episode's probably going to be quite a chonker. Doodaloo. Like me and bugs. Really? You don't like bugs? Oh, well, you should have said so earlier. I wouldn't have shown it to you. It's all right, I'll live. In case it helps, Melia's not too keen on them either. Then we'll keep out of, I'll keep it out of sight when I'm around her. What are you going to give for your in return? Any ideas? Hmm, I was thinking flowers maybe? I'm struggling for ideas to be honest. Well, how about exotic food? Fiora loves to cook. She's always looking to try new recipes for sure. That might be a good idea. Thank you, Charlotte. Then we better get looking. How about we start around here? Agreed. Lead on. I think I'm fine right here. Sorry, but I hate bugs. Ugh, maybe skin crawl. Alright then, no worry. Not to worry. Sorry I asked. So you're telling me Fiora doesn't mind them at all? Actually, she likes them just as much as you do. I put one in her pocket once as a present, and she went berserk. Dunban, newsflash here. No one likes bugs in their clothes. But I realised that the hard way. Things were more innocent back then. Takes me back, you know? I completely get what you mean. Hey, Ryan doesn't like bugs. I think he likes most things. He's a bit of an animal lover, too. I think her herd Melia is as well, actually. She is? How surprising. I'd love to know more about her tastes. What about, um, fruit? Does she like fruit? No, she definitely does not like fruit. She told me that herself. She might be like me. I don't really like sweet things at all, really. That's a shame. I love fruit. Everyone's different, I guess. And it's good to learn things about each other, right? It is. Thanks, Dumban. I must give Ryan... I think I might give Ryan some fruit as a present. Do you think he'd like it? So that's what you wanted to find out about. Well, Ryan likes basically everything, so you can't go wrong. Takes me back, you know? To when you were a weirdo? Hey, collecting bugs is a great hobby. What about Juju? I bet he collects bugs. Juju's more into animals. Bugs aren't really his thing. Wonder he brought home a baby hox. Otharum was so mad. Ah yes, those little critters might look innocent, but they'll have you but look the other way and they'll have your finger. The other big nuisance with Juju is vegetables. He can't stand them. I've never gotten to go near the things. Same as Shulk. His diet's not healthy at all. I've seen him eat vegetables. Fiora usually cooks vegetables, and I've seen him eat the lot. He's too embarrassed to tell her he doesn't like them. Ha, huh, those two, they must have been a handful. They were, and they still are. I'm Fiora's guardian, and I have to keep an eye on Shulk. You've got a lot on your plate, but you take good care of them. You're overthinking it. Oh no, you know, if you stop... You know, if you think too hard, your brain can stop working. You sound a lot like this... You sound like this has happened to you a lot, Ryan. Once or twice, I used to think a lot, once upon a time. But then I learned that I like doing stuff better than thinking about it. Maybe it's just because I'm stupid, but it feels more natural that way. I'm not going to argue with you. I can't quite see you as a deep thinker. Now, Ryan, the man of action, that's you all over. Right. So after I stopped worrying about stuff, it's easier that way. I wish I could be more like you, Ryan. I'm always worrying. That's why I'm here, Sharla. While you're busy worrying, I can be your hands and your feet, so you don't have to lift a finger. That's sweet, Ryan. Maybe I'll take you up on the offer sometime. Just remember, you have to be prepared to do the tough jobs. You don't have to tell me twice. You can leave everything to me. I can never stay sad for long when you're around, Ryan. When we get back to Colony 6, you and me will get stuck right in. It'll all be fine. Fine? Fine? 
You think the reconstruction is going to be easy? It's okay, they know you're out here fighting for them. You listen here, Ryan. If I'm out here fighting, that means I'm not back there helping out. Let me put it this way. You want to help out with the reconstruction, right? Well, we're fighting so the world can achieve peace. In a way, that means we're reconstructing the entire world. Ryan, I... Think about it. Unless we have peace, there's no point in even rebuilding Colony 6. It could all just come crashing down again. I see your point. It's funny how I never seem to get the simplest of things. I know why. It's because you think it's all your fault or something. Let go of all that guilt and things will be much clearer. It's true, I do feel guilty. But honestly, I still don't think I would have figured this out on my own. That's all down to you. Stick your head in the sand and all you get is sand in your eyes. From now on, don't hold it in. You can talk to me about anything. Treat me like a punching bag. You know, a punching bag for talking to. You're too kind, Ryan. Thanks. I look forward to sparring with you. Great, if there's one thing I can do, it's take knocks on the head. It's basically my job. Wait, are you talking about actual sparring now? Because I'm up for that too. So? What are you talking about? This is important. Oh, wrong accent there. Is it? Don't get me wrong, it's a bad situation. Get as angry as you want about it. But what is good is second guessing yourself supposed to do? What do you mean, second guessing? Let me ask you this. Whose idea was it for you to take along with me and shop? M mine, I guess? So why don't you give yourself a break and concentrate on that? There's not enough time in the day to worry about everything. Yeah, I can see what you mean. I should concentrate on the road ahead. Right now, my goal is simply making them pay. Wait, what? No! Your goal is stopping anyone else from getting hurt, isn't it? Oh, well, yeah, I suppose. But I can't do it on my own. That's why I need your help, Ryan, to protect my friends back home. You don't even need to ask. You don't even need to ask. <clears throat> you don't even need to ask. We're on the same team. And I don't want to lose anyone either. So let's show them how it's done. Heh, <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Ryan, you're something special. You know that, right? Was it ever in doubt? I'm as special as they come. 